वेलकम बैक टू और ऑनलाइन लेक्चर कोर्स ऑन स्टैटिस्टिकल मैकेनिक्स केमिस्ट्री एंड मेटेरियल साइंस टुडे वी शैल स्टार्ट इन यू टॉपिक वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक व्हिच इज द कंप्यूटर सिमुलेशन मेथड्स इन स्टैटिस्टिकल मैकेनिक्स एज वी हैव सीन we have we have gone through many aspects of uh, statistical mechanics from the beginning of the postulates and then on to uh, different ensembles and applications and one thing that you must have realized also that it's a lot of really lot of analytical work lot of very difficult mathematical methods that are being implemented and these mathematical methods and the requirement of mathematics becomes more and more demanding as you go to real systems actually at one point it becomes quite uh, difficult and uh, <coughs> so one then starts wondering that uh, can one really push this ambitious project of statistical mechanics of explaining the observed variables of liquids and uh, crystals phase transitions biological systems uh, from past principles by from past principles we mean that from an intermolecular potential particularly when the intermolecular potential comes in so this was the condition state of the art in 1960s and 70s when people are still pursuing analytical work uh, by end of 1970s it became quite clear that it might not uh, be feasible uh, to solve these analytical theories for example parkasiev equation uh or the partition functions to get the uh, required observed properties that was very 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 uh, uh that was begin beginning to uh, dawn on people fortunately at the very time the computers were developed to a great extent and very some very smart people realized that computer simulation can come to rescue uh, in a big way <coughs> and that was developed by very some artful techniques and now computer simulation is essentially the 90% of the applications of statistical mechanics that we do through computer simulation however the methods of computer simulations are firmly based on the uh, developments of or uh, advances of statistical mechanics even now so uh, this kind of handover basic uh, it seems like that statistical mechanics developed all the principles the methods and it was kind of handed over to apply to real systems because in the, 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 the analytical methods solving of integral equation theories uh, or, or as you see in case of mayer cluster expansion we could do uh, we could get the phase transition get some uh, about the cluster size distribution but even then the calculation of vdl coefficients is extremely difficult uh, for any kind of realistic potential so right we are uh, going to kind of just state what i have been saying that simple model based calculations can be done and then certain simple theories like cell theories uh, lattice models like ising models and out theory mean field theory they are wonderful theories they have done a wonderful job in explaining and providing us insight of what is going on however they cannot be uh, successfully applied to a quantitative predictive prediction for the real systems like real systems like uh, water liquid water ethanol uh, proteins uh, and then uh, dna Uh, so this this kind of what you want to understand the lipid bilayer so the, all these systems so let us stick to basically with water which is h2 a very simple thing so even in water analytical theories did not quite succeed despite tremendous effort were very very smart people well we can do <clears throat> some amount of analytical thing to uh, try to understand the uh, say liquid to steam transition but even when it comes to uh, freezing it is still a very very uh, it has not been successful 
So, uh, faced with these things, as I told you, in the 70s, it was a bit uh, 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 realized, and people realized that, however, this bottleneck, uh, this big, big wall presented by the analytical theories, which cannot deal complex intermolecular potential. Uh, what are intermolecular potential is complex in the sense is more than Leonard Jones, it has oxygen at home through hydrogen and it, they have charges, type of moment. But then at that time, computer simulation came to big, big rescue. And uh, so these intermolecular potentials which are discussed, like Leonard Jones, discussed a big way. And uh, this is just radial potential between two atoms. And water is a far cry from these things. So real molecules are quite far. So intermolecular potential for real molecular liquids like water, ethanol, dimethyl, sulfoxide, <coughs> many, many other things are far more complex. So analytical theories didn't work, and that is why computer simulation came to rescue. And as I said, 90% of the stat map based work now done with using computer simulations. So, in fact, it required no less ingenuity and no less creativity to develop the computer simulation techniques. Yes, basic principles and basic methodologies and the things that we need to calculate, like radial distribution function, specific heat from energy fluctuation. And many other quantities were in, uh, uh, indeed was uh, the, the formalism and the, the way to think and go about and the equations were given by uh, statistical mechanics, but they were implemented now through computer simulation. So uh, that's what I said, as if the methods of statistical mechanics was developed and handed over to the next generation to take it ahead by using computer simulations. So computer simulation, as I am saying, is needed very, very smart uh, work and uh, it started essentially with a very famous paper. I'll, I'll cite the paper in the next slide by Metropolis, Rosenbuth, Taylor and Taylor and uh, they did a, what is called Monte Carlo simulation. That's an equilibrium static simulation and a few years later in 1950s, both in 50s, Alder and Wainwright did this simulation uh, in, a, in a time plane by molecular dynamic simulation. and uh, both treated this hard sphere kind of interactions which was simple to do and uh, and got results which then uh, was tested against the theoretical results which fortunately were known quite a bit uh, from uh, analytical theories because hard sphere is something analytical theories made some advances so we then did computer simulations <coughs> and then tested the computer simulation against the analytical theories, it served both the purpose. We could test the analytical theories, which, uh, as I said, cannot be done exactly, but fairly accurately for hard spheres. And we can check computer simulations and uh, it is extremely important. Uh, that means this verifying uh, computer simulation by statistical mechanics and verifying statistical mechanics by computer simulation, where you start from first principles. I give you intermolecular potentials and you do computer simulation, like molecular dynamic simulations, and you give me a, a, a bunch of uh, numbers, which now can be tested with theory that flows directly from uh, statistical mechanics without going through the computer simulation. So they replayed it. This is something which is not sufficiently emphasized that these two things are extremely important and extremely um, useful in both the ways. And uh, while all the entire dosing with the hard spheres, the first continuous potential, and that was the birth of one can say realistic uh, simulation of real systems, was done by an Indian man, Isu Rahman, who studied in Hyderabad, and then he went to United States and made enormous contribution. Later teamed up with Stillinger, did the calculations of water, that those work went on on a whole of 1970s. I think there were eight or ten papers, very nice papers, which is done through um, uh, uh, these computer simulations. Of uh, then that became available in 1970s in increasing capacity. Now, I should also mention the work by Karplas, Washell, and Levitt, who had given Nobel Prize in 2014 or their applications of these computer simulation techniques or computer methods to study of biology and uh, that was the, you know you know you know is a celebration of the reach of uh, computer simulation 
before that on no nobel prize on computer simulation was given so a lot of lot of nobel prizes and recognition are given to analytical theories developed by statistical mechanics so these are the papers i told in this slide that you look into the slides are the first paper is uh, should be the metropolis rosen bud rosen bud taylor and taylor the equation of state calculation of fast computing machines 1953 then they stopped and they did hard sphere system then barney alder and when right they did hard sphere and later hard disk and uh, first paper of metropolis rosen bud the rosen bud was done by monte carlo simulations while alder and when right implemented and this is the molecular dynamics simulation so they are two different techniques but the results agree well with each other and with the theories as i have been telling then the real fast continuous potential was done by anis rohman is a seminal paper and very famous paper in 1964 which is highly cited and highly respected and then stillinger rohman teamed up, teamed up with stillinger and did a series of work on water and that at that time was increase the reach of computer simulation to a significant degree and uh, <coughs> this is history now let us start on the main work which is the classification of uh, uh, simulation and computer molecular dynamics simulation computer simulation rather divided into two things one is molecular dynamics which is uh, uh, propagated in time uh, domain and this monte carlo so remember when you are doing statistical mechanics in the beginning the postulates we are telling there are two postulates of statistical mechanics one is that equilibrium probability and another is the ensemble average, time average equal to ensemble average now in a so basic idea of statistical mechanics is that you have the phase space of n particles the six n dimensional space called capital gamma gamma space and the system is executing a walk in in this uh, trajectory in this uh, multi dimensional phase space and the properties that you observe as a result of this trajectory as the motion of the system on this phase space so if you want to do dynamics that how the uh, time they are correlated in time and also structure then we have to really let the system propagate on the six n dimensional space by moving each atom and molecule because the movement in phase space is essentially due to the movement of each atoms and molecules in these was atoms and molecules moving rotating and that a, e so one point in phase space to another point in phase space means change of configuration of all this my uh, in in particle system in molecule system or in atom system monte carlo on the other end is dips on the ensemble so molecular dynamics is time average monte carlo is uh, in the ensemble average in monte carlo there is no time in monte carlo simulation what we start with initial configuration then we follow certain rules to generate new new configurations new new configurations which are allowed according to boltzmann distribution and some technique like that but there is a lot of creativity in creating this monte carlo as mon name monte carlo see which is a huge gambling town with lots of casinos in france and uh, this monte carlo is a method which is uh, it depends on random number use of repeated use of random number and which allows us to push the system in the configuration space from one point in the configuration space to another configuration space and the, 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 there are rules so that it the uh, systems that we uh, generate follow the basic principles of statistical mechanics so the sampling is very important in monte carlo so to summarize again molecular dynamics is a time averaging while monte carlo uh, simulation is an ensemble based things so molecular dynamics is time and monte carlo has no time <coughs> that so uh, as i stated repeatedly in this uh, course that it is very important to get an overall picture the qualitative picture of what is because statistical mechanics involves lot of techniques lot of beautiful stuff and lot then but soon when you start doing work or research you do get get tend to get lost into the details especially in computer simulation you start of what kind of numerical technique i use to propagate it uh, what kind of sampling what kind of random number generator so there are many details but it is always makes sense to have the big picture in mind so that you know 
from where you are starting and where to go and you can figure out if you are making a mistake to get a moral understanding of what is expected what kind of results i need to compare with experiments are my results correct so these things are essentially uh, to keep you on the correct state and overall picture is required so so, so the computer simulation always has these four steps any computer simulation has these four steps we start with a, we prepare initial configuration i talk about preparing initial configuration example then the initial configuration often is very far from the system the configuration that you want to uh, study so then that from the initial configuration you have to run the system for a long time yeah, or in, in monte carlo also you have to make many many moves to equilibrate the system that you need the temperature pressure and density condition this equilibration is a very important thing because the equilibration brings the system to the state uh, microscopic state uh, that you so you start with the microscopic state in initial configuration then you keep on uh, evolving the system keep on changing the system so that you ultimately come to a state which i can call the system is in equilibrium so that i can start now measuring the properties so once it reaches the equilibrium we do a production run this is the run where we <coughs> calculate all the quantities along the trajectory or along this sample run and then we uh, use those to get the numbers so the production run generates the trajectories that to be used in analysis to obtain the experimentally observable results often the equilibration has to be longer than the production because once equilibrium is done production is reliable so often the recuperation is 5 to 10 times longer than production run so many times for example in a simulation of water of 1000 water molecules then your production run may be about uh, uh, 20 or 30 nanosecond but your recuperation may be more than that you know maybe 50 nanosecond so this is a very very important thing to remember that these four steps are always involved in okay so yeah about the initial configuration i told you for example, I want to simulate uh, <coughs> water, uh, then I, uh, in order to generate the configuration of liquid water, which is random, with random positions of water molecules, random orientations, there are two ways to generate them. One is to put the water molecules one by one into the box. Other one, which is more easy to visualize, is start with an ice. <coughs> Though, although you might be who interested in knowing water at 25 degrees centigrade at uh, ambient condition but you can start with the ice which is you know the structure of the ice uh, at 20 degrees centigrade or a little below that and so that ice gives you allows you so you put in a box around the ice now you increase the temperature as you increase the temperature the ice melts this is what i was saying now so ice served as the initial configuration now melting and running for a long time is the production is the is, is the equilibration so that after a long production done the liquid water that you get has forgotten that it came from ice then we are in a position to start making uh, calculations so after that we have equation and as i told you within a thousand Water molecules sometimes the production run starting from ice can be more than 50 nanosecond or even 100 nanosecond so that the final equilibrium state has forgotten your ice and is a is a equilibrium a, is a equilibrium state of the liquid water then we do maybe 10 nanosecond of uh, the production run and keep track of all the positions and momentum down and they use them energy position momentum orientation to calculate the properties the other is example seeing is argon when we start with argon with the crystal and then i <coughs> build the eyes and let's say i create an interface as yes, along the coexistence line of the liquid solid then you can see that on the left hand side we have the eye uh, argon fc crystal on the right hand side we have the random liquid and the uh, very sharp boundary between them similarly if you want to consider a protein then you start with protein data bank which gives me a, a configuration of all the amino acids. And I take the uh, express crystal structure from protein data bank, which has all the positions and the origins of atoms and molecules. And then if I want to uh, study it in water, then I, I dip it in water and run again for a long time. 
so that I get equilibrated structure. Once I get the equilibrated structure, I start studying the properties of the protein. Same we do in DNA <coughs> or the binary mixtures. So this is kind of explaining the steps of initial configuration, equilibration, production, and then uh, the analysis of the trajectory. So these are here I'm showing two trajectories in molecular classification, and uh, there are two particles which are, you know, not very close to each other. The positions of the particles are projected on three-dimensional space where we can visualize them, and you can see that these each of them seems to be a random haphazard motion. Like what we call a random walk, the trajectories. The reason it is so random, look at them, because we have, it contains the effects of interactions with all the surrounding molecules. And uh, this is very important because this lot of information is contained into these trajectories. Now we'll go on the, uh, the uh, basic, uh, very basic techniques of computer simulation and. Uh, <laughs> and so there are the following techniques. One is the periodic boundary condition, and there is minimum image convention. Then something comes. Well, minimum image convention uh, is uh, they are all very closely correlated. The time, the range of intermolecular interaction, uh, which has to be finite, otherwise it's very hard to simulate. And then something generated random number generator as in Monte Carlo simulation. And this random number generator has to form a Markov chain. So these are all connected. That we are saying here, all the five things connected. And as I told you, huge amount of isolated thinking and uh, a enormous amount of effort has gone into bringing this area of uh, computer simulation, which is an active area of research in the present state. So let us talk about prior, prior purity boundary condition. Why do we need purity boundary? You know, it is as you understand the real system is oh, I've got a number of water molecules 10 to the power 23. But however, we cannot do that because we are going to solve the interacting systems. It turns out we can typically consider it for some thing like water, few thousand water molecules. Well, we know for demanding cases, sometimes to resolve an issue, we, we might do larger systems. But routinely, we will do few thousand water molecules. And here we show that, but it's one huge problem. A small system that the fraction of uh, surface of uh, molecules on the surface scales as n to the power 2 by 3, where n is the number of particles in the system. So, in a microscopic system that's very, very small, you know, 1 in 10 to the power 8 particle is in the uh, a system. However, in uh, surface, uh, for small system, for something like uh, 216, which was the initial simulation of water molecule was done with 216 water molecules. That is 16.5% of the particles on the surface. Thousand is still 10. So <coughs> that, uh, uh, okay, 216, 36, and uh, uh, 1,100 particles. And this percentage on the last column, what percentage of particles on the surface and you don't want that because this creates a serious problem because we do not want to study the surface effect that has a different goal and different methodologies we want to study the bulk properties but if it is influenced so much by the surface we cannot really trust it so this was and several other uh, 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 limitations or drawbacks of finite simulation was circumvented by very carefully and artfully implementing this condition called periodic boundary condition, which creates, kind of puts the repeated of the same year original system, but removes the boundary. It's done here by the real system of the rate of arrows, up, up, down, up, down. This is my Ising model. But now, I this this uh, two dash line, vertical dash line on the my red line is uh, the, uh, the defines the boundary of the system, but I don't, I don't want to have the boundary. Uh, so what I do, I replicate this on the left and right. Now see on the left uh, most spin up spin is now is have a neighbor on the left hand side with the down spin. Similarly has the neighbor which is on the left. So <clears throat> yes this is you may consider this little bit of artificial but it 
serves the purpose. It will come to the artificiality. It serves the huge purpose of human the boundary. So, system is no longer bound. It doesn't have any surface. It is extended to infinite system. <clears throat> And then you will see that what are the limitations further, how we go about it. But it's true that it has uh, uh, certain correlations will be compromised. And uh, but when the system is sufficiently large, maybe thousand or few thousand, then the these surfaces, the particle switcher on the surface, they fill the uh, Correlations, but if the correlation between one end of the surface to another of the surface is not long range, then for many purposes the periodic boundary condition. And so, so this is the con continuity is made at the surface, and you know we at one stroke we remove the boundary. And now, and we are there in Ising model, the systems uh, go, <coughs> you know, they are the, the fixed digit, but in uh, in this case, the but the, in real liquid molecules move around. Then there is one very beautiful thing that has been invented that if a molecule goes out of the box, like the one on my top left in my shaded area, that is my original box, then the other one, which is an identical position placed in the periodic image, will move in. So in this way, number of particles in the system, number of molecules in my system is conserved. This is done for every image. So every image retained the number of particles. So the particle leaves the central box, image enters the, through the exactly opposite side. This is again a very nice technique, but on the other hand, you know, it has limitations as you can realize. But but as I, I as I'm saying that these limitations is not too drastic. Then uh, periodic boundary conditions in surfaces for emission. For example, dealing in phase transitions near the critical phenomena this periodic boundary condition creates a problem because you are creating an image uh, of a system when correlations go far beyond so you are cutting off those long range correlations that's why study of phase transitions is very difficult but there are techniques again to circumvent them called fine excess scaling but we are not going to go into that so the next technique is the minimum image convention and this is another beauty it's very uh, Again, when you are do the, doing the periodic uh, boundary conditions, you are creating a huge number of images. The system has become virtually infinite. Then two things come into play. A, if you are going to in, uh, include interaction with the spins, then all the interaction with all these spins are not required. Or interaction of one molecule with all the other molecules that you created not required. And because of the finite range of the interaction potential, and more importantly, you do not want to interact with your own image and here the rate uh, is done this called minimum image convention MIC that's within the rate my rate box that I must cut out the interaction of my uh, spin that this one is the, the elliptical one that should not interact with itself okay so main system is showing here in this uh, uh, with the, by double arrow on the bottom and then we, we draw this thing uh, so that now you can uh, you can uh, you within that now you are interacting with the, my central spin is interacting with these two spins on the left and two spins on the right but it does not interact with its own image so that is the minimum image content both periodic and real images and Particle must not see its own periodic repetition. Then uh, another thing of the pure minimum image convention is uh, another thing that works very well with MIC is the truncation of inter intermolecular potential. Many times we actually do not have to go all the way to minimum uh, length of the minimum image convention because intermolecular potentials are often uh, short range and like Leonard Jones potential, we might take up to third neighbor or so. After that, intermolecular potential becomes negligibly small. So, the in, when interaction potential is short range, then we need not consider interaction between all the particles. Then we can have a kind of a box 
within which we will consider the interaction. So this is then combined with this <coughs> minimum image convention to, to take care of the uh, finite range of the intermolecular interaction. So as I told you, there are many, many interesting techniques are developed and uh, this is the and then random number generated and particularly in Monte Carlo simulation, what do we need to do? We need to do uh, many random number, uh, many random moves because we have to sample the configuration space and we cannot let move in a correlated way. Then many, uh, many uh, off bit or many other uh, configurations are far from my initial configuration. We get argument unexplored. So basic idea then is to push the system into different directions randomly so that I my sam my system samples um, maximum number of configurations and <coughs> this is done by using a random number generator so that the positions and the velocities are changed of each atom or molecule are changed randomly by small amount but then we of course have guidelines to see that whether we accept that configuration or not and that is sampling that was developed by metropolis and called metropolis sampling but we will come into that in the next lecture so but we need that for a very large number of random numbers and one important thing that is the random numbers should not be correlated so random number should not repeat itself and this is called when i have a sequence of random numbers where one is uncorrelated to the other so uh, we develop a uh, so basically we develop a Markov process that which has no correlation. So each random number and the previous one, next one, next one, next one, they are all completely uncorrelated with each other, and that's very important. So that I get to sample the much of the configuration space. The transition from one microscopic state to another microscopic state, you know, has to be. Uh, as much uncorrelated as possible so that I sample everything. Of course, that's not possible because just giving push, you do not put it away of the configuration space. But we allow it move in all directions. So while Markov chain is independent of each other, system is not independent. We should not um, uh, mistake that. System remains correlated, but we push it in different direction so that everything is uh, and computer simulations done in reduced unit, I talked in many times in my class that, okay, uh, because of the universality that allows it, rho star is rho sigma q, sigma is the molecular diameter, rho is the number density, t star kvt by e, this dimensionless unit allows a transferability, that I can now compare a methanol with ethanol, but then I have to put them in the same dimensionless unit, and a rho star of ethanol will have different rho, uh, because sigma is different. Similarly, methanol will be different. T star will be different because of the interaction potential epsilon. So it's very important. The dimensional unit, as I discussed, the law of corresponding states uh, allows you to explore certain aspects of universality. It is a very, very important thing. So uh, uh, final issue I discussed today's lecture is the force field which is like interaction potential as I said Leonard Jones is very simple even that was generated because of the uh, Leonard Jones did it by using the uh, Mayer's expression of the virial coefficient uh, temperature dependent of the virial coefficient from equation of state which was measured experimentally but in uh, for example like water we similarly have the equation of state we have the diffusion coefficient of the water now there is oxygen which is negatively charged and two hydrogen which are positively charged which by a large no from quantum chemical calculation positively charged then size however there are many things we are not taking into account when we are taking the two water molecules interacting and we pairwise additivity that means three particle four particle interactions are not taken into account that has to be absorbed in my interaction equation this game this technique of finding a good interaction potential is called force field is a highly demanding and highly respected area of research now because once you have a force field then you get various uh, now pattern is well set <clears throat> so this is uh, the force field once i get force field i can do the computer simulation but getting force field itself is a sort of 
the simulation, a lot of statistical mechanics. And so back and forth, back and forth, then finally we settled on a force field. And that then can be used for computer simulation. Okay, so take home message of this lecture is that we study complex systems with very good interactions. It really, really takes the statistical mechanics in a huge direction. So to an extent, the modern success of statistical mechanics as a subject uh, is hugely due to the computer simulations. And there are many books. My book is there, but then computer simulation of the Frankel and Smith. And then the Allen and Tildesley, number three, Allen and Tildesley is a very respected book. And I strongly recommend and you get a lot of materials on, <coughs> on uh, a, in the internet and Google and you can see many, many simulations actually, the trajectories, the configurations evolving through computer simulation. I strongly recommend you that you see some of these things in your day.